this is the direction that feels right. And I feel purposeful and I feel like this has fulfillment for me. And so I'm going to go that direction, no matter how hard it is. And when I've done that every single time, new doors open, new opportunities open. That's amazing. Welcome to the On Track with Annie podcast. Today's guest is Molly Tennant. Molly Tennant is an expert in real estate and helps you generate wealth with zero cash down. She helped acquire close to $250 million in real estate deals. Today's podcast is all about generating wealth, entrepreneurship, how to build a life you love and become financially independent. So check out today's episode and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks for being on. So one thing that I like to ask everyone just to kind of give a background to the guests is how you got started with your career and where you are today. Oh gosh, Annie, that is a loaded <laughs> question. Let's right? go, let's go back to as, as far back before this current career started. <laughs> so as a child, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I had my sights set on being a veterinarian actually. Um, at some point I had my sights on being an engineer. So I went to school to be an engineer. I changed my degree to genetics. I graduated with a degree in genetics from Arizona state university. And then I was on my way to veterinarian school. I went to do all of my, my prerequisites. Like I was doing volunteer hours. I worked at the zoo for a short period of time as a volunteer. I did everything I could to get to that point. And then I realized it wasn't really my path. Like I, I didn't want to go spend all that money. And although I could do it and like, I, I, did, I never doubted that I could do it. I felt like I didn't, it didn't make sense financially. It didn't make sense for my life and the, the direction that I was going with my life. I had a small child. I actually found out I was pregnant with my second child during that time. And I had a husband who wanted to go start a business and be an entrepreneur So for me, it was like, okay, go to school and go a completely different direction than what my husband and my family are doing. And I would be in school and be busy and then be a doctor and be busy as a doctor and not be with my family or go the direction that I feel like my heart wants to go, which is help my husband and be with my family. So how long ago was this? Just so we can get some context. Um, let's see, that was 2013. So 10 years ago, I'm aging. I feel like I'm aging myself, but it was 10 years ago. (laughs) Yeah. I was, I graduated from college. So, um, when I got to that point though, I was like, okay, well, I don't, I'm not the one I've literally, I was in school to be an engineer and I was going to be a doctor. The ambitions, the bar was set high. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to just go be a stay at home mom, you know, like I don't, that was never going to feel fulfilling to me. And and I think it's great when people want to be stay-at-home moms. Many of my students, which we'll talk about soon, are stay-at-home moms. So I decided I would go get my real estate license, not thinking I would do anything really with it, right? And I was going to help my husband start his business. And so I became the ultimate entrepreneur in my husband's business where I did everything. I did the books. I did, you know, we had an automotive business. So I did the estimates. I did the customer service, I ordered parts, every single thing I did. That's awesome. But I will say from a business owner perspective, it is not scalable and it's not long-term sustainable. So we burned ourselves out, right? We burned ourselves out pretty quickly within five years. um, Those businesses, we were at the point where we were like, okay, we had other things happen. And I was like, we got to just kind of shut everything down because we need a restart, right? Mm -hmm. So we re- we started over. I still had my real estate license. And during that period of time, I just kind of did real estate on the side. That was our like play money. I made, you know, 40 or $50,000 a year on average. Some years I didn't even make do any deals, you know, and that was it. You know, it was on top of our, our regular income that we had. And when we shut the shops down, I was like, okay, I really want to figure out how to use my real estate license and like do something in real estate. And I was approached by, I don't know if you're familiar with Residential Assisted Living Academy, Isabel Garino and Jean Garino. Okay. So I was approached by them to come work for them. I worked for them for three years as an executive director of their association. Jean unfortunately passed away from COVID in 2021. And shortly after Pace caught, got wind that I was free or available through somebody else and he was looking for an operator. Wow. Anyway, that's a long story. I go down this path of 
you know, being with Pace for the last two years, basically. And during that period of time, I've really dove into his business and, and what he's doing with his business as a real estate investor and started organizing and, you know, quieting the chaos in his life. And that then eventually turned into where I'm at right now, which is me having my own, I don't like to call it a mentorship, but my own community mm -hmm. that is a spinoff of his community, which is sub two called top tier TC. Mm -hmm. And so top tier TC is where we bring all of the people who want to more, probably more so the introverts of the investor world, the people who want to be in the background and do you still have to be forward in a way because you still have to talk to people just like any investor does, but you don't necessarily have to be the one buying the deals or doing the deals yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're the background person that's organizing and keeping everything on track and making on track with Annie, right? Keeping yeah. it that I, pun intended. Love it. <laughs> so I, I just did that on purpose. Anyways, so we, we keep things on track. In other words, we take ownership of that transaction and bring it to closing and make sure that everything happens the way it should. What's been interesting for me though, is that I came from the traditional real estate space, obviously, and then coming into the creative or the investor space is sort of like the taboo area of real estate. Like it's where like, people are like, oh, like those are where the shady people <laughs> exist. And I have found the complete opposite, right? I've found that yes, there are those people that exist that are trying to get one over on people they are trying to be shady, but there's also 99% of them are just the people that are out there trying to figure out the most creative strategies to help people solve their problems. Oh, you can't sell your house. How about we do it in this creative way? Oh, you are going to lose money if you sell your house. How about we creatively solve that problem? You don't have to lose money to sell your house, you know, and there's been really cool situations that I never would have thought of. My mind has been expanded in so many ways, just coming into this realm. And with that, I've then be, been able to bring it into the transaction coordination world where transaction coordinators, I think are totally undervalued in the, the traditional space. They don't, I mean, they make a couple hundred bucks on a transaction. If it closes, like nobody values a transaction coordinator. Now I will say a traditional real estate deal, I could probably do with my eyes closed, right? Like it's just very push button. It's meant to be that way. But when you get into transaction coordinating creative files, it's a longer process. Number one, there's a lot more hiccups and things that you run into. And as the owner of that transaction and getting it to the closing table, you try and solve those problems without bothering everybody, right? You try and figure out creative ways to help solve those problems, whether it means hiring an attorney or coming back to them and re-strategizing and renegotiating and, and telling them, hey, I think maybe this might be a better path because we've ran into these issues. It's a lot more work intensive than it is for a traditional transaction. Oh my gosh, that sounds like there's a lot involved with that. Did you Did working with Pace kind of allow you to think about, okay, I wanna do this on my own and take this next step? You know, girl, I never intended, I am very much so an entrepreneur. I kind of mentioned that even yeah. my, my husband's like the CEO. I like to be the COO. Like I like to lead, but I don't want to be the person to come up with the ideas. That's just naturally who I am, right? I'm an integrator. So we have that perfect rocket fuel, uh, integrator visionary thing going on here. And what's been great about that is that no matter how big of an idea Pace has, I'm always on board and I'm always like, okay, let's, my, my gears are turning. How do we make this happen? How do we make it work? And is it possible? And, and, and if it's not possible, let's just, you know, let's get rid of that idea right away, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what Pace has done is he's opened my eyes to the fact that I could do something like this. I mean, I never intended you, I'm sure you never intended to be where you're at right now. No, <laughs> right? no. like it happens. It really does happen on accident. Right. And these are beautiful accidents and anybody can make something work when it happens on accident. I love that, that concept of like, you just ended up where you are and you made it work and you've made it beautiful and great. But what I found is that it's not that I took the least path of resistance. It's that I took this path that felt like, okay, this is the direction that feels right. And I feel purposeful and I feel like this has fulfillment for me. And so I'm going to go that direction, no matter how hard it is. And when I've done that every single time, new doors open, new opportunities open. And because of pace and the way he drives and pushes and pushes and pushes and drives, and there's always more things to do, it's really opened me up to doing way more than I ever thought I could do. So for me to start a community and have, I mean, I think I have 400 students right now. Wow. That's amazing. It's amazing. We just started at the end of July. It's oh, November. Congratulations. That's insane. 
it's insane. And I yeah. still have this imposter syndrome where I'm like, I don't know. It wasn't that great. I don't know if I created this great thing. And then I get compliments every day of like, I, it finally clicked for me when I took your course. And I never even thought of this as a career. I just did it for myself because I wanted to be able to do my own deals. And now I'm transaction coordinating other people's deals. And now I have an extra source of income that I wasn't even anticipating. You know, those types of comments are just so about, they're like beating my imposter syndrome down Like, go away, you know? Yeah. So it's so crazy how I ended up here. And yes, a lot of it was influenced by pace, but a lot of it was learning along the way of what pace as an investor needs so that I can teach other people what real estate investors or real estate agents need in a transaction coordinator. That is extremely cool. And I want to come back to a little bit more about what your course okay. does, but yeah. I know that you helped pace acquire close to $250 million. Is that right? Yeah. And that was through, I mean, gosh, that was through a winding path of like fund of fund opportunities where we're, we're just investors into another deal, um, purchasing multifamily assets where I'd never been in the multifamily world before, which is sort of like a step into the commercial real estate world to right now, actually, we are purchasing a commercial building nice. and starting a biz, another business together with my husband involved. So there's, there's been so much, even since that number was put out there, there's been even more, you know, it's constant. We close wow. on multiple deals a week. You know, it's, it's, it's an evolving thing that constantly has, it's constantly got fire underneath it. So I think people hear that number and they're like, holy shit, that's insane. Like, how do you even go about doing that? And I think a lot of people might have ideas, but it's the execution they struggle with and like their day to day. So what are some things that are like, you have to do every single day as a business owner, as an entrepreneur that is going to get you ahead once you reach the end of the week? What I will say is consistency is key. Just like I was saying, like once your routine is thrown off with working out when we first talked when yeah. I first been here, right? Once your routine is thrown off, you you throw off your your success, right? You're not going to get the results you want if your consistency is off. So even if your consistency is not necessarily working all the time, as long as you're consistently moving in a direction of doing something, you know, and this is where I see a lot of people come into, they buy a ton of mentorships. They're not necessarily communities like Pace and I have communities, but these other mentorships that are meant to teach you something, and they they just think that it's going to be the easy button, right? And that they're going to come in and they're going to pay this money and they're going to just know how to do the things and they're not. And it's like, if if you went to college or if you went to get any other education, you wouldn't come out of college. I didn't even come out of real estate school really knowing how to do a real estate deal. Yeah. Right. And so you have to put it into work, into action. You have to go and do the consistent things every single day, putting yourself out there as a transaction coordinator to the people who could be your clients. If you don't put yourself out there, if you don't consistently do something, I don't care what it is, something, you're never going to get the results you're looking for. And so the same thing goes with pace, right? So pace, and, and this is the thing. I have a different perspective on this because pace is very much so a influencer for people who are just jumping into real estate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great, but I, he, you know, and I will hear him say, don't quit your W2. Don't quit what you're doing. Don't just jump into real estate feet first and think you're going to just like make a bunch of money right away because it's a hard industry, right? It's, it's in most industries where you're an entrepreneur, it is difficult, right? You mm -hmm. have really high highs and really low lows and you have to be okay with that flex. And if you don't have something that's consistent for you, whether it's a W2 or another business that's already successful, you may fall flat on your face really hard and have a bad chip on your shoulder about what happened. And so Pace had a construction business, right? Pace, is, Pace started in the real estate world by having a construction business, which then turned into him buying real estate, probably to offset his construction income, right? And then spiraled into this whole like, okay, now I can do buy properties creatively and I can fix and flip and I can, and it turned, instead of him being a contractor, now he was full-time in real estate. And a lot of people don't, make that transition. They don't say, okay, I need some kind of consistent income and then goals to set of where I can transition out, right? Whether it's wholesaling. I feel like a lot of people start well, they build income like liquidity by wholesaling, or they build it by doing um, Airbnb arbitrage where they rent out houses and then they just are earning cash. They're not necessarily getting the depreciation from that house, but they're just earning cash to build up their income to be able to buy houses that maybe only make a couple hundred dollars a month, but they're offsetting their income. 
And so that's the place where Pace is at right now. It's where he can buy anything and it's beneficial for him, whether it's tax purposes or whether the property actually cash flows, he can do both. But I don't think new investors fully understand how that process comes to fruition. And even Pace along his way, you know, has, has fallen on his face and done things like that. And, and Pace will say, I'm a cockroach. I just come back and just I live through everything, you know? And so he's been really good about being persistent and consistent with his direction and the place he wants to go. And when you lack vision or you lack goals or you lack anything to work towards, then you, you don't have anywhere to go. You don't have anything to consistently do to make it to that place. And I don't think Pace's goal was ever income, right? Like a, an amount of income that he wanted to make. It was about the impact that he was making in the world and the people that he was able to help and what people will find not only in my community, but also in Pace's communities is that that's really the core value of each of them is that we want to be here to help each other and do this as a community. If someone's struggling, like last night, somebody was struggling and saying, Hey, I'm just done. Like I, I spent this money on this mentorship and I haven't got my money back and I'm done. Right. Like, and the whole community got together and they're like, Pace, you need to talk to this person. We need to, you know, lift her up. Anybody needs to help her. And it was just so beautiful because that doesn't happen. I mean, I've come from other mentorships. I've seen other mentorships. I've seen other groups that are very removed. It's like, here's the education. Here's what we do. We do a one Q and a every single week and, da, 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 and that's mm -hmm. it. But there's no love and community. It really is the word I keep saying is community around these people to rally with them and say, okay, you're struggling. How do we help you? And that's what's beautiful about the communities we've created. And that's how Pace has gotten to where he is. Well, it seems like a lot of it's having a vision and a purpose. And that's like your main focus. And then you're like, what are all the exact steps that I need to take to get to this point? And what's going to get me to that vision that I have? So yeah. going back to kind of, I want to dive a little bit deeper because I think people are maybe a little bit confused on like, okay, what, what's the best thing that I can do within the day? Is it running ads? Is it making a bunch of sales calls? Is it posting on social media? Is it going out there and handing out flyers? Like, what have you found is the best way to help you gain clients or help you kind of succeed in your business? Yeah. And I think all of those things that you just said are what everybody thinks about when they think about marketing. Yeah. Right. And that's really not even it. <laughs> that's not it. Right. We have these stereotypes in our head of what marketing is. And when you look at what Pace is actually doing, when you look at what the most successful transaction coordinators within my group are doing, it's about them bringing value to other people. So whether they're coming into these investor groups once a week, twice a week, three times a week and saying, I learned this this week, here's something I went through on a transaction and I learned this thing. Zero part of that is advertising. Now they could put something at the end that says, if you need any transaction coordination help, let me know, you know, but it's not marketing, it's bringing value. It's putting yourself out there and saying, I'm doing things. I mean, look at you, probably the popularity with you came from people being like, I want to know what Annie's doing, <laughs> right? You yeah. put yourself out there and I want to know what Annie's doing. Same with Pace. Pace puts himself out there. He shows what he has going on in his life and the things that he's working on. And people are interested. People tune in, people subscribe, you know, they want to know what you're doing. And that's not so it is marketing, but it's not so much like I have a flyer for my business and here, take my business card. You know, it's more so I bring value. I have things I'm doing. Do you want to be along the ride? And that's what I encourage my students to do. Yeah. So once you bring value, right? How mm -hmm. would you go about, what's the best way to go about making that sale? I don't even want to use that word because I know it's yeah. like you're building a community as well, but what is yeah. the best way once you have that attention grab from these people to make that sale and actually get that client to follow X, Y, Z? And I would say usually what it, there's a series of things that happen after you put yourself out there, you have people start reaching out to you about questions about things that don't necessarily have to do with them needing you on a transaction. And mm -hmm. either that person then recommends somebody else to you. Cause they're like, Oh, I have this great girl. That's doing a lot of things. I haven't needed to use her yet. Cause I haven't done my first deal yet, but I know she's great. Cause I see her posting and I see her out there doing things. Mm -hmm. And then they send you that person, right. That says, Hey, I, I have a transaction and I need to find a transaction coordinator. So that's number one, what I see happening, but also that person that is reaching out to you a couple of times to say, Hey, I see you've worked on this. I have a transaction that this just happened. What would you have done? You're then creating credibility for yourself. Mm 
Mm. where you're putting yourself over to them and saying, okay, yeah, I'll give you advice. I'll let you know, you know, whatever. Maybe you'll hop on a 10, 15 minute consultation call with them to talk about something. And I always say, don't overextend yourself. Right. And I have tons of, this is naturally what transaction coordinators want to do. They're the people pleasers of the world. They want to spend hours and hours on the phone with somebody and, you know, give them all the value in one single phone call. But the reality is, is you can't for your own success as a transaction coordinator, as a business owner, right? You can't overextend yourself and spend too much time with somebody who's not actually going to bring you business right then. But you also aren't really bringing them a whole bunch of value in in that hour phone call. You're probably over talking and talking about too many things that you don't need to talk about. So if you spend 10 to 15 minutes and I have my TCs schedule those out, like, hey, have whether it's an hour every single day that you have time blocks for 10 to 15 minutes in that hour, And when someone contacts you, whether it's from a post you made on Facebook, whether it's from an advertisement you put out, wherever it's from, you can say, yep, I have a space tomorrow open at this time. When you start the call, you say, hey, I have 10 minutes at that 10 minute mark. Do they need to revisit? Do you need to have another call? Do they need to send you their files and you can get started on it? What is the next step? You have some action items that happen after that call. And that's how you then close that sale. Mm -hmm. So it's once again, more so about building that relationship and building your credibility as somebody that's bringing value than it is about closing the sale, you know? So do you think sales then has changed? Has it changed to being less salesy and just more relatable to the, to the client? I don't think that the, the traditional marketing world would say that. Like I see, for example, the education company that hosts my, and I'm sure you've interacted with them that hosts our courses, Pace's course and my course they are extraordinarily helpful and they're useful and they 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 have their purpose. But the marketing that they do feels very traditional marketing, mm-hmm. right? And the marketing that Pace does or encourages us to do collectively within our partnership as well is about bringing value and about showing people how they can do something. And I think a lot of people are scared to like give away their secret sauce. <laughs> you know what I mean? hundred percent. And it's like, what are you scared of? Like if someone wants to go out and do it on their own, they don't know everything. They're probably going to need to come back to you. And what we've found is that, I mean, Pace has a a group with over 150,000 people, a a free creative finance Facebook group with over 150,000 people. That's where a lot of my transaction coordinators get their business from. There are people out there doing these deals without being in a mentorship, right? They, They can make it happen. But what happens is, They see all of the wonderful things happening in the community vicariously, either through other people or through things that Pace puts out there. And they want to be a part of it. It's all about FOMO. They want to be a part of the party. They don't want to be out there on the outside doing things on their own. So for us, it's like, it's not even about giving away the secret sauce. It's that if you want to be a part of an amazing community and build and grow with these people, then come join us. If you want to go out and do all this stuff on your own, okay, cool. Here's some resources for you. That's how it works. You know? So walk me through this course. When someone signs up, what happens? Yeah. So I will start this with, okay. I, when I came to base about this, I wasn't coming to him about, I want to start my own community. I said, I feel like there are people who are investors that are trying to be transaction coordinators that may be going astray. Now I have previous traditional real estate backgrounds. So I have a little bit more guarded rules for how things should be done. And I have a little bit more background on why we need to kind of stay within some boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like people who were being transaction coordinators were actually presenting themselves as attorneys or agent. They were presenting agency as if they were an agent representing somebody and they were crossing boundaries that felt like icky. And I didn't want that to come back on us. Like you taught these people to do this because it wasn't what we taught them, right? We didn't teach them how to be a transaction coordinator. So I was like, Pace, can I put some education within the group about transaction coordination so we can like mitigate the problems that I could potentially see happening here? And he was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Next thing you know, I'm in touch with New Reach Education and I'm like a brand visionary for a new community. And I'm like, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm here. So That's what I originally thought I was doing. But now when people come in, they're getting way, I didn't even realize how much this was needed within this realm until I got the feedback that I get from students. 
So when people come in, they can sign up for a couple of different levels. We have like a cash transaction course. Um, I think that starts at $9.99, so $1,000. And that's just basically showing somebody what a cash transaction process looks like, right? And how you can help as a traditional, mainly a traditional transaction coordinator. Then there's a secondary step to that where you can get certified. You have a certification that goes along with it, but it's still just the cash transaction program. And then they have the full shebang where you can get into the community. You have access to, I think we do five or six live Zooms every single wow. week. And they're all a couple hours long, an hour to two hours long. Sometimes they go over just because people have a million questions and I'm like OCD and have to answer all of the questions in every Zoom. And then they also get access to the 15 to 20 hours of creative and cash transaction materials. That's pre-recorded content. I like to call that the bumpers on the bowling lane. You may not hit a strike the first round out, but you could get out of that 15 to 20 hours and know how to do a transaction. And you may need some guidance along the way to get it perfect, but you could definitely get it down the aisle. And so that continued education that we do every single week, those five to six Zooms, that just builds on what we did in the pre-recorded content. And it gives people a place to ask questions about real live transactions they're working on. And what I found actually, when we first started, I knew there wasn't going to be a whole bunch of questions because there really wasn't a lot of people that were actively working deals. But now we have to have two Q&As. We have to have a newbie Q&A and, and an advanced Q&A because the advanced Q&A has gotten so advanced that any wow. newbie that got in there was going to be like, why are we talking about this? And I have no idea. You guys are like 500 steps ahead of me, right? And so I love that though, because it's out of necessity. We have people at all levels, people who are super advanced in dealing with complex transactions and people who are very, very new and dealing with newbie type questions. And we of course accommodate for that. So it's really, really great to see people grow and fit into this space, especially when they haven't come from any real estate background at all. And that's what I love about the group is that you don't have to come in with previous real estate experience. You can come in with some experience, no experience, a lot of experience. And I've seen everybody get value at all those different levels, no matter what. So it's been super rewarding. That's amazing. So is it all video content that you offer? Do you have like forms or quizzes? I know some people will do it that way. Yeah, they do. They have like a certificate program where you like graduate, you, you get your, your quit, your test, and then you graduate. And then they actually put you on a list Mm -hmm. of people that get put out to the sub two community and the other communities that PACE has as, hey, these are top tier certified TCs that can help you on your deal. So is the only way that the they can communicate with each other through the Zooms or is it, do you have a separate way of them like chatting with each other if they have questions? Yeah, no, we have a whole community, a Facebook community. Nice. And that's really where most of that network is networking is happening. You know, people will come in and it was like right away. And I think it's because a lot of my students were pulled from the sub two communities and they're very, very active with each other in those communities. And so they all introduce themselves. They all have their, their routine thing that they did because they came from sub two, which then encourages the new students to do the same. And of course, then when they have a question, the first thing they do is they go to the group. And they say, hey, I have this deal I'm dealing with, or I have a, somebody that's reaching out to me. What do I do? And within 10, 15 minutes, somebody's there to answer and help them. And that's been so rewarding for me because I don't necessarily have to be the one that answers them. I have amazing students that are there to rally around each other and help each other get through anything, whether it's a newbie question or a super advanced question. And the best part is, is they all seem to be answering the questions correctly. I don't have to go in and be like, actually, that's not right. Don't listen to that person. You know, like it's, it hasn't been like that. And on top of that, they get access to the people who get into the community, which is our highest level, our highest tier of membership is that they get access to four one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with wow. my team. So I run a team of five transaction coordinators. I have a Q and A every single week. That's two or three hours long. So they can come to that. But if they can't, if they need a question answered by somebody who they feel like is more credible than maybe somebody in the group, which I have super credible students in the group then they can uh, schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching call as well. That's amazing. So how do you differentiate? Because this is one thing that I think would be maybe tricky for you is differentiating, I, differentiating, I can't even say that word right now, your content that is online versus the content that you offer in the program and trying yeah. not to give away too much with either one. I know you mentioned like people don't want to give away their secret sauce, but I think it can be challenging. Like how can I add value while not saying too much because you want to leave it for the course? Like talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. The thing is, is what you'll learn is that no real estate transaction is the same. 
And just like in any, in any field, once you actually get into doing it. So I'll give an example of, you could watch a tutorial on installing a supercharger on your car. I'm going to go with cars because I used to have car businesses. Okay. A supercharger on your car, right? And someone will show you how to do it on a YouTube video. It may look super easy. It takes them an hour or whatever, probably would actually take longer than that, but whatever. They have it out there. Then you go to do it yourself and you realize you don't have the bracket that they had. You don't have the same stuff. They, there were there were parts of it that were left out mm -hmm. that you wish you could just call them up or go to the community and ask right there. Hey, I saw this in this video. What does that actually mean? Or how does she get through this? And that's what we have, right? You have the answers at your fingertip, even if you run into something that you don't know how to do. Whereas if somebody's online and they're watching the content that you're making, there are always going to be things that get, get left out, right? There's always yeah. information that you need more help. So, so you can either just think critically and fill in the blanks yourself and figure it out, which is great. Or you can consult with an attorney in your area or do whatever and fill in the blanks and make the transaction happen. Or in my opinion, you can take the easy way out and join the community and have the answers right at your fingertips whenever you need it, you know? So that's how I feel about it is like, there's no way for me to ever bring as much value to the public content that we put out there as I do within the community because it's so one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense then if you're able to kind of ask questions as you need and have it be more of a personal experience. Um, okay. So what is the biggest challenge for you moving forward? Like on your day-to-day, -day, you know, entrepreneurial journey, what has been the biggest challenge that you face that kind of you've overcome that has been a key part of continuing to grow? You know, I feel like we all deal with our own inner demons. I talked about, you know, um, imposter syndrome for myself, but also as a leader of a community, when you see that within your community members, it is really hard to not latch onto that and be like, I've failed them. If, mm -hmm. if someone is feeling that way, then I have failed them. But what then brings life back into us as community leaders is seeing the other people lift these students up and lift each other up and say, you know what? We've all got our lows. You're in a low right now. Doesn't mean you have to quit. It doesn't mean you have to give up. It means that you should persevere and you should push through. And that's how you're going to get better and do this. And you will not regret it. You will regret it one day if you quit. And then you see all of your friends out doing these amazing things. And you're like, I should have just stuck with it. You know, 100%. I should have yeah. just kept doing it. And so for me, that is really difficult when you have somebody come in and and I always hope that it doesn't pull the energy off, right? Like if someone comes in and they have a really hard question and they have like, I'm struggling with this. If someone else, then I'm always worried someone else is gonna be like, me too. Oh, I feel that, you know, like, and it never happens. It never happens. Like I've been super blessed that the people within our communities are very positive and uplifting and it doesn't spiral out of control, but I always worry that it's going to. And so for me, <laughs> in my specific space as a leader of a community where my goal is to make sure everybody is be having success and being successful and I've given them the tools to be successful, that's something I struggle with as I feel like I maybe am letting somebody down. I haven't given them all the content they need. I haven't you know, done something that they needed to be successful. And really that's just in my head because all the tools are there. I'm watching a majority of them be successful, yeah. right? but I don't want to even let one person down. And as an entrepreneur, I think in any business you're in, you don't want to let anybody down. If you're in charge of your success as an entrepreneur. And when you have other people that rely on you, you don't want to let them down either. And that is the biggest struggle with being an entrepreneur. But also sometimes they might not be using the tools that you give them to their totally. advantage. They're kind of like, yeah, I'll totally. do this later. They're not fully paying yeah. attention or whatever the case may be. So it's not. Never... And I'm an empath, right? And so I think for me, that's, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. You have to use your empathetic strategies in different ways, right? You can be empathetic with somebody without letting it fully affect you and blame yourself, mm -hmm. or you can use it in a way that's like, okay, I see you. I see where you're coming from and I feel that for you. Yes. Let's fix it and let's figure out a game plan going forward on how we can fix it. So I have I have to fight back those things all the time, you know, of being like, oh, this is just, you know, I feel bad that this person is at this position and you sort of blame yourself to a certain extent. And then the other part of you is like, no, this isn't you. This is a them thing, but we can help them. So let's see how we can help them. 
And that's what makes you a good coach slash mentor. And not everyone's journey is going to start the same. It's kind of like, you're always going to, it's always a zigzag. I always see these like pictures online of like what success is and people think it's this and it's like all these different, and it's so true. It's so true. So you're kind of in that struggle where you're like trying to figure out how to make the path like this, you know, yes. so it's, it makes sense. Yeah. How do we, how do, and that's what I want, right? We're all, and I think that's also a transaction coordinator thing where you want everything to be perfect. Like you mm -hmm. want, you want to make sure nobody deals with any problems. You're there to make sure things go smooth. And if there yeah. is a problem, you deal with it if you can, or you deal with it in a way that makes everybody less stressed, right? You take it on yourself. And so I do the same thing within the community, within everything. I always want to try and take those burdens on myself. And that's just not even right. I mean, as a community, you're there to take on these challenges as a community. Yeah. And why not do it together? So I, it's great. I love that. I love that. So what's one exciting thing that you have coming up that you're working on? Oh gosh. You know, we are getting ready to host our first event. Um, we're going to do a TC mastery event and we're in the middle of planning that event. And if you've ever planned an event, it's super fun because you're picking out like, what's the swag we're going to do and what food are we going to eat and what activities are we going to do? But the other part of it is that it's these events, they're, they're like masterminds, right? You're, they're meant to be a growing, a learning experience for you, like to, almost like a spiritual experience, mm -hmm. right? Where you're coming to break down your walls and build yourself back up so you can go out from, of that event better and able to attack the goals that you have. And so coming up with the strategies and the content for that and how that works out has been really enlightening. And, and I'm, I'm always thinking about like, what would I want coming into this event? Would I want to like, everybody struggles with like, I don't know what direction to go. I don't know what I don't know. And I don't know what I'm missing to be successful. Mm -hmm. And it may be because they don't know exactly what about this world is fulfilling to them. And so they have to find where they belong in it. And so a lot of these events are about like, where do you feel most fulfilled? Where, what are you doing in your life right now that isn't fulfilling? And how do you delegate those things to do the things that are most fulfilling to you? So you can scale and be the most successful as a transaction coordinator in your business. And that looks different for everyone. Yeah. So catering to all these different types of people and getting all these different types of people to have those aha moments at a big event like this. So it feels worth it for them to come and, and fly out here and spend all the time to come here and do this with us. It's a challenge, which is great. So it's terrifying in one way, but it's also super exciting to think about being able to change people's lives and help them expand on their career. I do think it's really cool when you've been coaching someone online and talking to them and you see them in person, it's this like crazy energy and connection. It's totally different. And I think you 100% need it. Um, it's so I think that's totally so cool. Different. Yeah, it's really different. And I, you know what is funny is I always feel like I misinterpreted how tall somebody would be, <laughs> you know, so like, true. they're either taller or shorter than I thought they would. And I'm like, I don't know why my brain thought you were really tall and you're actually, <laughs> I mean, everyone looks a little different. I totally agree with that. That's, so funny. <laughs> That's amazing. So where can they find you if they want to follow along and check out your course and all of that? So to get into the course, you'd go to www.toptiertc.com. You can get set up with a, I don't know what they call them, an enrollment director to have that conversation with them about what the courses look like. There's a different, like I said, there's varying levels of those courses. So on that website, you'll get directed to get a phone call with them. I think they also have an interview that I did with Pace right here in this house um, where we talk about his journey and how he hired me and how we got to where we are today. So it's super intriguing and exciting to see that too. It was really well put together. That's amazing. I'll put everything in the description below and thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you so much.